When we're working with thought leaders who are early on in their thought leadership journey, we often hear that articulating their message is difficult. And it makes sense, right? I mean, thought leaders often have complex messages. I mean, it doesn't matter what industry or background you come from, the likelihood is what you do and the way in which you do it is unique to you. And it can be hard for others to understand it. And so what we do when we have somebody who is early on in their journey, the very first thing we do is we start crafting that message in a way that we know will be engaging. And the way we do this is with our idea framework. Now, this framework is a really simple way of actually getting that idea down into one sentence. And it's a sentence that is clear and that is understandable. Now, that sentence is comprised of three things, a what, a how, and a why. Now, I know you're probably thinking, oh, I've heard this before. Isn't there a book called Start With Why? And didn't Simon Sinek write that? Yes, in fact, he did. But we use that framework a little bit differently than, than Simon Sinek uses his in the way that he explains it. You see, in our world, in the communications world, when we're working with a thought leader, the what is their topic. It's the thing they speak about. It's often not differentiated. In fact, it is important that it, it be something that others understand. There could be thousands of people talking on the same topic, and that's okay, um, because your audience will understand what that topic is. The why, now this is your unique point. This is where you differentiate, and it's what you bring that no one else can bring, because your, your how is your point. It is the way in which you activate that what. And it's comprised of your unique way of approaching it. That's going to include your education. What is it that you know about that topic that others may not or that you use in a way that others don't? It may come from your culture. There may be some things that you bring to that what that others wouldn't have thought of because your background is a little different. It'll also be your own, maybe your own research. Um, maybe it's your own process or methodology that you've developed over time. That how is unique to you. And the what and the how together come together in such a way that they create your idea. It sounds like that's complete, right? A what and a how. So the topic and the way in which you activate that topic through process and methodology and, and research. But without the third piece, the why, what you would have is something that's interesting, but not very motivating and, and lacking a little bit in that connection piece or the engagement. The why is where your passion lives. The why is the outcome of the what and the how. And it's the impact that they have on the customer, on the industry, maybe even on the world. So when you have a what, a how, and a why together, what you're doing is you're creating an idea that is unique to you, that has passion built into it and outcomes that others want to see. Now, that's the way in which you craft your idea. Now, when we're putting it together as a sentence, we like to use a little testing framework and it goes like this. Today, I'm going to talk to you about what, and I'll show you how, because why. Now, that sounds like a, a really sort of boring setup, right? And it is because it's a framework. It's not meant for you to say in your talk or in your, your content, but it is meant for you to use as a way to test that idea, for you to hear it said out loud so you can hear it and not just think it. You see, here's the challenge when we're writing an idea. Our brain is so smart that as we come up with our what, our how, and our why in our mind, and even when we're looking at it on the page, what happens is our brain is filling in all the missing pieces that we may not have down on that page or have thought about. 
So it's not until we literally write it into a framework like the one that I've just provided and then give it to somebody else to read to us. At that moment, what happens is it's no longer inside of our head. It's no longer our thought. We're hearing somebody else saying it to us. And when we hear it said to us, our brain goes, oh, wait a minute, this is missing, or that's not quite right, or wow, I thought it was this way. When we hear our own idea said to us, we're able to hear it in a more complete way. And what you'll find is using that framework, it allows you to refine that idea down till it's absolutely right. The words are right, the outcomes are right, the topic is right. You hear it said in a way that you want to represent that idea. And now you have an idea that can be represented and you have it in a, in a sentence that is probably quite dense in terms of the content that it holds, but it's complete. Now, because it's dense, what you need is a story to hold it. Now, this is what I call idea-centric storytelling. You write the idea first, and then you go into your own life or your own experience, and you find the story that that idea can be held within, and you build that story very purposely to hold that idea. Our story spine is the perfect tool for that. I've got a few videos about the story spine already. So if you haven't watched those, I suggest you do that because the idea framework and the story spine fit together like a hand in glove and give you the perfect tool to be able to create engagement and memorability on the ideas that you want to share and that will build your acclaim as a thought leader. Now, if you want to download the idea framework so you can start working on your idea, click on the link below. And don't forget, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any more of these great tips to help you build your acclaim as the thought leader you already are.